Welcome to Creative Bug Daily Challenge. My name is Nancy and I'm here with Heidi and Lucy and we're going to introduce you guys to a class on Creative Bug which is a service that the library holds. It's free with your library card um, and share our experiences and kind of how we've how we've approached them, what we've done, how we feel about it in hopes to get you guys interested in programs and get you guys interested in these classes to see if you would like to do them. So the one that we picked for this month is watercolor lettering with Jessica Park. Mm -hmm. I guess it's yes. Jess. Jess, Jess Park. Sorry. Jess Park. With Jess Park. Mm -hmm. um, and we are halfway through. So we're doing a halfway through check-in. Um, so we're going to be talking about stuff up to day 15. Um, so I guess the first question is, how are you guys feeling? I mean, I, I enjoy, like we were, <laughs> I was enjoying it. Like it's just been like a nice kind of the beginning, like the methodical, just like tracing the letters and trying to get into the rhythm of making them, writing mm -hmm. them on like, we're using tracing paper on top of these sheets that have the letters. Um, it's different writing. The tracing paper is really smooth. And then I went to like, yeah. where that was a little more coarse. And I was like, it's not flowing. I'm not getting all the things. And it's just like, it's a little, it's going to take some practice, but um, I have really terrible handwriting. And so, I feel like it's starting to improve how I write in general now. And it's just mm -hmm. like, she's always like, take your time. And I'm like, that's one thing I never really do. Yeah. I used to try, I tried to do that. Your, this, uh, what was it? Your handwriting can change your life. Mm -hmm. Once I just never stuck to it. And it's just like, yeah, you got to learn to take your time. And so you get those, that motor muscle memory going. Right. So it's like, yeah, definitely. I know if I do move slower, my letters are better, but then sometimes it's like, yeah, you're overthinking and, uh, it's a it's weird it's like it's funny yeah. like what a deep process it starts to be and it's just like you're just lettering <laughs> yeah that's, I, I find it's a oh go ahead no it's i write in cursive all the time so this uh wasn't that huge of a jump for me um and i've done in my bullet journal i've done like monthly pages where i've kind of fudged hand lettering and done like I'll thicken it in various spots so it looks like brush lettering, but it's really just me writing and then making it thicker. So this was really hard for me to be like, I don't, I'm so used to doing that, that having the brush pens and trying to manipulate those in the right way to get them to do what they're supposed to do at first was nearly impossible. So it was just like every day I would sit down for this and it'd just be like this big frustrated sigh of like, <laughs> okay, let it go. It's going to be fine. Like just follow the instructions. But yeah, that's the, she has you um like put tracing paper over top of the sheets that she has you print off that like changed everything for me and was so much more helpful. Cause I'm like, now I don't have to keep printing these off. And the, Brush letter pens do actually work better on the tracing paper oh, they because work so well on the tracing. They, do. they really do, and it's really really nice. So, mm -hmm. I think I've been struggling a lot with like certain aspects of like the fundamentals, and that's kept me from continuing like doing finished projects from day ten on, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm like I don't feel like my lettering is good enough, but. Yeah. She does, she does go back and talk about like, oh, if you need to fill in your letters a little bit, if they get a little scratchy or a little bumpy on the watercolor paper, feel free to do that. And I was like, well, I'm doing that already every time I write. So that was a little bit of a Zen moment for me of like, I don't have to be quite so obsessed about getting it perfect. So. Yeah. I think that, that Zen idea is, it's like, I've, that's, I've struggled between finding a balance of mm -hmm. like, thinking about doing the strokes, tapering them, you know, the pressure of the pen, slowing down, but then not overthinking it because then I just like mess up. And it's, it is that kind of like just relaxing flow. And I feel the same way you do, Heidi. I've noticed like I was taking notes on something I was reading and I was really like 
slowing down the way I was writing. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I kind of like the way this feels because my handwriting normally is not not nice. And, you know, because I'm rushed. I'm always rushed. Yeah. And it, I know I can't, crazy. often I can't read what I wrote. Which yeah. Is <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I do run into that problem too. Yeah. And that's, so. it's, I mean, and it was noticing like how much I was clenching the pen mm -hmm. and how much my hands would start to shake because I was like so tight and that's something like I'm really cognizant of when I'm knitting or crocheting. Like if I'm really, really tense, everything comes out. Like everything's more frustrating because it comes, it doesn't come out the way that I'm used to it. So it's like that mindfulness moment of like, okay, you need to relax. It's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of understanding, getting a little bit of that mindfulness of like, I can relax. And this is very nice because right. Did have several Zen moments when I was tracing of like, oh, this feels really nice. Like this yeah. is really good. Tracing I could do. This good kind of like this, All thing. Thing. this flow. Yeah. yeah. I think what's so hard is you're doing the tracing and you're like, I got this. I got this. Mm -hmm. Then you go to do it on your own. And my letters are not, they're not the same. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have a laser level or whatever. But um, you know, it's there, it just doesn't, it doesn't translate onto the paper yeah, the way I want it to. Which That's is kind of why I've been sticking with, like, I should branch out. I'm sticking with her exact quotes because it helps me to watch her mm -hmm. do it, mm -hmm. each letter. Because um, she's not always doing the lettering the way she instructed in the sheets, which right. is helpful, too, to realize, like, you can branch out. You can make it your own. Um, and I was saying before we started that I got some books from the library, which have kind of helped me. So like just look at different hand lettering and and realize you can come up with a, a combination yeah um, but i like with holding the pen it reminded me of uh doing like the meditative drawing um and uh molly taught a few classes at the library for that and i remember one of the number one things she's just like you know you have to breathe and that but like if you notice you're starting to hold the pen and you're getting tense set it down take a break, like shake out your hands, even stand up if you need to, whatever, because you want to keep, you know, you want to keep everything nice and fluid. So mm -hmm. it kind of came back to me too, because I, I get the same way where I'm like, I'm really trying to make it this, you know, yeah. it's, like, it's like, no, loosen That's, it up. <laughs> one of the things I had planned, because I don't have a laser level either, and I wasn't willing to invest in one for this program. Um, and it's, I kind of looked at it of like, I could use a ruler and just draw out those lines very lightly in pencil on my watercolor paper and see if that would work. Mm -hmm. um, I almost feel a little bit more comfortable doing that than using the laser level because the laser level is one line. Yeah. So having that, you would really have to already have a good spatial awareness of what the letters are supposed to look like and what their shape is mm -hmm. and like how, what are you using that single line as? Are you using it as your baseline? Are you using it as the midline? Or, you know, how are you right. doing that? So it's, I find that challenging. I think we talked about a little, when we were like four or five days in, where it's like, there's a couple programs and a couple classes that could have come before this one that would have helped prepare us better for what we're doing in this program, in this class, which, I would wholly agree with because there are, she does make a lot of leaps. Like you said, Lucy, or she'll, mm -hmm. she'll start doing something and then she'll kind of make a leap into something else. And like, I notice what she's doing differently, but I can't actually identify what the technique is that she's doing right. differently yeah. because I don't know enough about lettering and I don't know anything about watercolor mm -hmm. um, to kind of be able to fill in the blanks with those things. So that's, I think a little bit where my frustration is coming in is there are some jumps with that. Yeah. I can say I have a laser level and I've used it, but I do not like, it hurts my eyes kind of like, I don't like how it's like vibrating on the page and oh, it wow. is just that one line. I mean, I've still been doing it and just trying to be like getting guesswork with like my spacing and seeing how it comes out. I think over time, it's just a, a lot of this is just practice and I don't know how much time I'm going to spend practicing. Like I haven't done much, of the initial like the fundamental lettering practice like I thought mm -hmm. I would uh, maybe I'll get back into it because I just yeah. kind of want to keep going into the challenges but um yeah maybe if I would practice it more I think if you are someone who wants to who envisions using hand lettering or, or wants to to use it more mm -hmm. makes cards does um 
you know, like Nancy, you were talking about bullet journals or mm -hmm. scrapbooking, or you, you just have place you, you want to make like, um, decorative stuff for your house that's hand lettered mm -hmm. then this would be her probably other classes of hers this would also be really helpful yeah. just to give you that foundation um and then i think if that like i know for myself if i if i saw myself having a place where i would use it i probably would put in more of that practice i think i i'm not sure it's it's fun to learn and i like learning the watercolor aspects of the class a lot, like how to, um, you know, wet on wet, wet on dry, doing ombre, doing all those different things. Um, but like, personally, I'm not sure how much I would use lettering, how much lettering I'll do, but maybe that will change. Maybe it, I'll start to use it in more places, so. Yeah, then that's kind of how I felt too, because like, one of the things about the lettering that kind of was interesting to me is that she recommends that you buy these Tombow, um water-based brush pens mm -hmm. these are like industry state well okay industry they're they're kind of standard for bullet journal planners um that are more artistic so these mm -hmm. are used extensively in like artistic bullet journals I actually ran across a term that somebody used that i thought was really funny is maximalist bullet journaling instead of minimalist so it's like as extra as humanly possible mm -hmm. um which really well that really describes like the highly artistic bullet journaling stuff really, really well. Um, so I wanted to learn how to use those because I've tried using brush pens and I've tried using brushes before, but I could never get it. Like they didn't come, I didn't, wasn't getting the thick and thin. So like mm -hmm. that was the supplies aspect of this kind of. Right. Me in, I also like, wanted to learn. We are, are you talking about something other than the food and food and food and, yeah, I have different. Yeah, so there's those are different. So there's um and I have those too. I have those Tombow watercolor or that's a brush pen. Yeah, it's a brush pen. Brush so, pen. Yeah, so like this. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So it's got the brush tip. Yeah. And initially that's what I was using, and then I realized I have the wrong pen, so I went out and bought a set of these because Yeah, that's what I these those guys are, yeah. a mm -hmm. lot better for the actual like they do. <laughs> Well I bought I bought one black one black pen of the Tombow Fudenosuke pens in a soft tip and a hard tip because I wanted to see what the difference was. Oh. And then I bought several of the Pentel sign brush. Pens. Yeah, I have one of those. Yeah, because these were cheaper. They're, these are open. You can get these open stock at Michael's. I couldn't find them when I was there. I only the They're thing, really maybe I got the wrong sign pen because it was in a package. Uh, I don't. No, know. no, no. Those are the right ones because they come in a pack. They do. They come in a pack of all the colors. Oh no! I have one that's like an individual. Anyway. Oh, um, well, it's they're really, really hidden. Like they're really well hidden because it's like I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of confusing well, at Michaels. Honestly, they have so many. There's so many pens in this world. I mean, it is an yes. aisle and a half. So there's like two sides of pens. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, I'm actually really grateful for that because before I was having to go to a website called Jet Pens and order them individually through Jet Pens if I wanted to test something. So now the majority of like the really popular stuff I can find at Michael's, which is enormously helpful for me because I don't have to pay for shipping. I don't have to buy like a ton of them at once if I want to try a couple because I'm one of those people of like, I'm really particular about writing utensils. Like I, yeah. I like what I like. I like, cause I do a lot of writing and I do a lot of planning. Um, so pen. that was really nice. It was a Pentel sign. Yeah. It, yeah. Oh yeah. Same thing. thing. Okay. Yes. Exactly. I was trying to get like, I don't even know if I'm buying the right things anymore. <laughs> I know. There were a lot yeah. of guys on this These are the program. Brush pens I, I got. Those. Yeah. I didn't have the Tombow, but. Yeah. I wanted to try. So these, these Ecoline brush pens, I understand why these are so expensive. These are amazing. Are they? Yeah. I mean, it's like watercolor in a pen. Kind yeah. Of. And that's like, I did, I did a line while we were doodling. Now I want to buy Before these. Set up. Oh. That's what we, it's so nice. Oh my God. Like, cause I, the first time I tried it, I was like, okay, well I understand why these are $4 a piece mm -hmm. cause they're awesome. Um, so I only bought a couple different colors because I didn't want to invest $80 yeah. in a full set. 
Um, well, and then he has you like dip them in um, other ink. Yeah. You know, which is cool. But I was like, do I want to do that with my pen? That, yeah, no, well, because I mean, most pens, these are self-cleaning. So like as you scribble on paper with them, the ink will like, if you dip them in something else, the ink will come out. Yeah. That's not standard on a lot of pens and a lot of markers. Mm -hmm, like right. that, it's, that's a new thing within the last five years. It did kind because, of work with the Tombow, but I didn't, I just didn't want to do it very often. I no, I get nervous with the Tombow pens because they actually don't self clean as well. Like I did that with this peach one that I have and there's still a little bit of dark pigment mm -hmm. on the tip that I can't quite get off. Uh, uh, so that made me really nervous of like, well, I ruined the pen now. So, I But I was know. just going to say, like, there are a, t there's a tremendous amount of materials on here, but I think a lot of them are, are, and you can find this with anything. It's like, they're incidental. You can find ways to work mm -hmm. around it. Like, yeah. you don't have to have black paper for the metallic paints. If you, if you have the metallic mm -hmm. paints, you don't even have to have the metallic paints, but no. they show up well on white. I did one where I first did a wash of blue and then painted my metallics on top. Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, so, that's cool. No, I was playing with the metallics on white and you don't actually, because I was trying to like teach myself how to use an actual paintbrush to do lettering. Mm -hmm. um, messing around and the metallics do show up really well on white i bought a small really really tiny pad of black mixed media paper that was a lot cheaper because i was like it's not it's not that expensive i can you know use this for other stuff because i have a lot of solid and metallic gel pens and pens that i use for just doodling and artwork so that was something of like i'll use this later down the line but yeah that'd be great on black. yeah you're totally right it's like i looked at that list and i was like Oh my, this is, a lot of the stuff is superfluous. You don't need to have a full set. The watercolors in tubes that she lists are like the highest standard watercolor that you can buy on the market. Yeah. They're enormously expensive. Well, and especially and then, how she was using them, like she squeezes it out of the tube and then lets it dry overnight. So she's basically making um, a palette. Yeah. Like, it's like the hard yeah. palette ones you buy. It's like, well, I already have one, why, or the pan, not palette. Right style is what she's doing with it anyway. So I was like, well, what's the point? And mm -hmm. I bought like really inexpensive. I think this thing was maybe seven dollars. Yep. For that one, yeah, six ninety nine. I mean, they're not as nice as hers, perhaps, but I, especially for this, I'm just practicing and playing. So it's like mm -hmm. I just would shy away from like investing in all the super duper high quality. I mean, yes, it can make a difference. Okay. You have to have the right pens. But after a while, when you're just playing around with this and you don't really know how much of it you're going to make it into your life, it's like, just spend a little, go back later and get, it's like learning to knit and crochet. Like I started okay. off with really cheap yarn or, mm -hmm. you know, but inex relatively inexpensive. And then mm -hmm. I moved into better yarn because I had my skills and I knew I wouldn't be ripping it out all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, I think we, through, through texting back and forth and through conversations back and forth, it was like the brush pens, specifically the Tombow ones, the Tombow Fudenoskes, those, you, they're, you can't, you have to have those. Those are, those are like. Yeah, okay. those make a difference. Yeah. You have to have some kind of watercolor. It does not have to be expensive. It can be a yeah. $4 palette, like basic 12 color palette from Michael's or even like the dollar store. And then, um watercolor paper those are really like mm -hmm. the key things that you're going to need oh, and even the brushes and don't have to be brushes. super fancy no they don't like, i happen to have some and i remember i bought them in a pack what are they the fa faber castell is that how you say it faber castell or fabric i can't remember no these are called craft smart sorry they're even cheaper than that but they work just they're fine you know it's, fine yeah no, they're fine. I did. I, I do think you would want to have, or I found that like when she's like, I'm using my number six round brush. Sure, you want the different sizes. It's kind of helpful to have that. But you don't need to go out and buy brushes that are $10, $12 a piece. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, God, no. no. Not unless you, no. you anticipate using them. Yeah. 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 That's, I bought a set of brushes, uh, watercolor brushes in one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe like 12 sizes. Um, on Amazon for 10 bucks because wow. I do a lot of like random painting. So that was something of like, okay, I can see myself investing in this. Plus it was, they're basically $2 a piece. So that's not horrible, right. but like 
if it's something that you want to get into, you can run into sales at Michael's and Joann's. I went last weekend to get, um, I, I can't remember what I went in there for, but it was for this program. And I stumbled on, they were doing for their artist loft payment paints, all their open stock paints were buy one, get one 50% off. And then all the pens and markers, the yeah, open yeah. pens and markers were buy one, get one 50% off. So I saved a ton of money by just doing that. And that's like something that I'll do as a knitter and crocheter and sewer is like, I'll wait for those sales mm -hmm. and stock up on stuff when those sales happen. Um, so it takes a little bit of pre-planning or like willingness to play the long game, I guess, of, you know, I'm going to get these supplies when I can. Right. But I think the big point for us for this and across the board was like buy the bare minimum of supplies. Don't run out and spend a hundred dollars yeah. on supplies for something that you don't know for sure that you're actually going to stick with. Get, yeah. If you get, if you get through it or you get into it and you're like, I really want to do this all the time. I want to yeah. use this. Yeah. Um, I think that the three of us like um, down the road, we should start to look at, craft at creative bug challenges based on the supplies that we've been collecting yes the challenges that we're doing yeah. Yeah. so that because i you know like there's some out there i think like lisa congdon does one where it's all this different stuff with color in a in a um mm -hmm. sketchbook and so she has all the supplies listed because you and you know someday yeah. we'll get there bit by bit yeah, yeah it's it's all i've also like pushed off buying high quality art supplies for a very, very long time because I've been so heavily involved in fiber art mm -hmm. and not. So, so like when I was in high school, I bought a Windsor and Newton tiny. I don't actually think. Yeah. No, I do have it. This little Windsor Newton tiny watercolor field set. Oh yeah. And like this, it's got stuff in it, but. Yours is this bigger is, than mine, but that's what I have, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I actually have almost, I'm, I've hit pan, I've hit the bottom of the pan on one of the colors, so I have to replace one of them. It's $5 to replace each one. I think I paid like 50 bucks for this when I was in high school, and that was a huge investment, but I've had this set for 15 years, Yeah. and they're still good. Like, they still work really, really well. Okay, There's not as, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just, yeah, I have so, it reminds me, I have so many supplies of, um, in college, I took a graphic arts class, and it was kind of annoying, because I was, I was a photography major at the time, and graphic, this graphic arts was part of the program, but, like, we needed so many supplies, I remember it was close to, like, and this was ninth, you know, the early 90s, and, <laughs> you know, and it's like, I think it was close to $200 for all these supplies, and I was like, I'm not in a graphic, I'm never going to use these for any, any other classes. But yeah. fortunately, you know, I have them still, a lot of them, they, they're still good, you know, some years later. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, it was a worthwhile investment. So good supplies, yeah. you know, as long as they don't yeah. dry out. Well, and, and it's also well. like, the, the market has really pro proliferated for, for art supplies. So you can find art supplies that are really affordable. I bought a watercolor palette on Amazon that's 40 colors for $28. And it has neons in it nice like, oh, the like bright neons and i was so excited about that because i found a neon palette that was five colors for like 10 bucks so mm -hmm. i found this other palette and i was like well i'm gonna get that and i'm gonna get another watercolor palette because i want more colors yeah. um that i don't have to mix myself that's one of the things that i'm not very good at and i do need to look into more with watercolor is how do you mix your own colors and keep them long term in a palette like i don't i don't understand how to do that I never mix enough of a color for a project. I'm always having to go back and like remix it. It's not the same. So I'm struggling with that quite a bit, but mm -hmm. like there's, there's all different types of palettes out there that, you know, you can get for pretty dang cheap and they are actually really easy to use. So like that had the neons I wanted, had the metallics and it's like, well, I'm spending you know, like this one neon palette is half as much as this other 40 color palette. I'm just going to buy the 40 color palette and it turned out great. And it's just like, like I'm having a ton of fun with just that. So I haven't gotten tons of lettering stuff, but. You do get, I think a little bit better with your mixing. 
So, I mean, yeah. if you're not mixing enough to, like for the whole project, you know, and it can be kind of annoying that you got to go mix more, but you know, you'll get, get it down. Um, yeah. And usually with watercolors, you can re-wet them. So it, it's not like acrylics. Like if you mix, that's the thing, like acrylics, you mix too much. You just, you have to throw it away because it's you do. plastic and it dries up. Yeah. But, yeah. That's, but I, I do really, to, really like that about watercolor. The one thing you said about the long game, it made me realize it was like, cause sometimes I buy supplies when I don't necessarily need them, but it was something that's been on the list and I wanted and you buy mm -hmm. it and you're like, I haven't, and it's like six months go by and you're like, I never used that thing. Like, should I feel guilty and shame? But it's like, it's all part of the long game. It's like at one point yeah. I needed it for something and I may do without, but now I'll have it for next time. Like yeah. I finally bought a wool pressing mat. I'm like, cool. I don't need it right away, but here Ooh. it is. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds great. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 But that's, you know, and I, that's kind of my approach to a lot of different types of crafting is like, I'm, I'm playing the long game of I'll probably get interested in this at some point in the future. So it's not a horrible idea to invest in it. Um, but I do kind of have to pick and choose. I went a little crazy for supplies for this program. So I don't think that I'm going to keep everything. Um, Cause I kind of like hit a panic moment where I was like, I bought way too much stuff. I have too many options. Um, so kind of like, I don't know. I learned about a lot about myself when I was buying supplies for this program of some of my habits and kind of what my personality is for, mm -hmm. I like to be prepared. And when I don't feel prepared, I have a tendency to overcompensate after that. So it's just like, I oh God. I've never in my life used a brush cleaner. All my life we were taught, how to clean our brushes with a little bit of soap. So I don't even like, that's like one of those things where I'm like, this is not so. I've always used Dawn dish soap to clean my brushes. <laughs> it's like, I, it, jump into these yeah. challenges and try not to be overwhelmed by the materials. Mm -hmm. And especially as you're watching it, you can figure out what you really need and what you, what you can live yes. without. Yeah. You know? That would be, that's a, would be something that is a good thing to impart. Like if you think you want to do a challenge, yeah. And you're looking at the supply list and you feel overwhelmed. Like just watch the first couple days before yes. you even buy supplies. You can skip and, further into it and see like, yeah. yeah. Cause even I feel like Courtney Shiruti says that in some, in some of her other programs too. She's like, if you have this, you know, or if you don't have this material specifically, it's okay. You know, yeah. you can do this another well, way. She's using, I mean, she's great. She'll grab like her Mr. Sketch markers, which of course instantly makes me want Mr. Sketch markers. Oh, so I I, those. They came yeah. in that styrofoam tray. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's blast from the past for me. But that's, I loved that about, about Courtney Cerruti's programs where she talks about the things that you can substitute and the mm -hmm. things that you can do that. I really appreciate that when creators that are teaching or presenting a skill are really honest with the fact that you don't have to go Right. high end right when you're starting out that it's almost better if you don't because mm -hmm. uh, you're learning about the art form itself and it's not I don't know I just well I, I wish you... there were two lists like yeah. the basics that you need and then if you want to invest more here buy these things so right but it's like it makes it like you've been playing with a marker that's not great but then you use that econo line or eco line you get it. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> But it's like, yeah. so, so you, so you practice with the stuff that's not so great and you build up some skills and techniques. And then when you use the other stuff, it's like, oh, you know, it's like yeah. practicing on a piano that wasn't tuned. And then when it is, it's like, oh, this is yeah, really nice. And it, yeah. So. I actually, I, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was looking online for other um, practice sheets to print out just the different styles. And one of the websites, I can't remember where it was that I found, they were just using, um, the Crayola fine tip markers yeah. and they showed you like you can start with that top thin line or, or going up and it's just in the pressure. But you know, so there, there are ways that you could enter into this even probably mm -hmm. with what you have around to try, as you were saying, Heidi, to get that's going to help you actually get the skill of like the pressure and the, um, yeah. and holding it. And, and then that. she even does like with the gel pen, you know, she, that is like a, it's a tip. So like, uh, that one, I don't remember what day it was, but like, here's my example that I did that day. I didn't want to use her quote, but like the white was the gel pen. And it's just like, you had to kind of fill it in to make it look right. like a brush letter. Yeah. You know, yes. That's all she did. Cause otherwise it's a fine line that you create. So mm -hmm. you just kind of thicken it. Like you were saying, Nancy, how you do that with your bullet journaling. Yes. So, yeah. Completely valid. 
in legal ways. Yeah. But it was frustrating too, though. She like some of the examples, like uh, Lucy, you did one like the B starts with B. What was the quote? B the rainbow. <laughs> be the rainbow. Be, be the rainbow, rainbow in somebody rainbow. else's cloud or something. Yeah. But it, it's got all these different styles of lettering, and it's like, well, where did that come from? Like she yeah. doesn't mention like. Well, and I went back with like, that how one. Supposed to know how to do that. Once she taught the shadowing, like yeah. she didn't even do this in her quote. I went back and did that. Uh, I, yeah, that's why I had to do her quote because I had to copy her. Yeah, because she didn't teach that kind of lettering or capital letters. And it's just like, well, oh. and then, like somewhere in the comments, it's like, yeah, that's in a different program. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> it might be nice to have said, you know, some other classes of mine, yeah. you know, that might help right. with this. But yeah, I mean, I'm not trying yeah, to. I I understand wanting to like at the at the outset of posting a class on Creative Bug, wanting to make it accessible to everyone. So like you stumble on this and, and it's like, no, just go from where you stumbled on to, to make it like accessible to everyone. But having like your prerequisites listed of like these things may help before you do this one. Mm -hmm. As a learner, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Of like, don't, it's just, it's frustrating to me. Like, Creative Bug is supposed to be a service for introductory classes, introductory so. programs. Some of them are, some, yeah. most of, I would think most of them are, or they're meant to be accessible. Yeah. Then you're not making it accessible. And that kind of confused me a little bit. This is the first time I've run into that, full disclosure. This is the first time with a creative book program that I felt I'm completely unprepared walking in, but that's also because this is an art form that's, that's very out of my wheelhouse. So I think I was going to feel that way anyways. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm being really critical because it is an area that I don't have a lot of experience in. So I kind of agree. Although yeah. I kind of, after a few days, I was like, what did I walk into? Like, I, <laughs> you kind of, yeah. it's, it's good. It's like, it's humbling. Yeah. It's like, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing at all with this. And I, it is something where I'm actually learning. And I think that's why I kind of got into doing yeah. the practice of just writing out the letters, you know, like mm -hmm. having a show on or a podcast and just like, I'm practicing my lettering, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. I should probably practice more. Um, yeah. Yeah, just, I've been I've been doing a lot of practice and a not a lot of um, finishing stuff. Um, I've spent actually more time finding out what quotes I'm going to use in instead of her quotes, because um, I some of her quotes are a little too hyper positive for me. Um, so there's a lot of there's the ones in here that I pick that have a lot of swears in them, which I. Those are for me. <laughs> I think <Yeah>. it's fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been having fun picking out like the quotes that I want to do. Yeah. For that. So. All right. Well, halfway through, mm -hmm. yeah, we're struggling, and it's good. It's a good start. We're getting there. I feel like it's I'm in school. Start. You know, I mean, it's kind of cool. These are like you're taking a class, and, mm -hmm. and I know it's like some days it's like buckle down, just go do it. Start yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's definitely something of like, I feel like I've got to put the work in to get the results that I want. So I am having to like commit time to it. Yeah. And um, it's a little unfamiliar for me because it's been a while since I've actually learned anything new. So that yeah. is a fun process. And I am enjoying that because there is something to be said of like, you're only going to learn something once, like for the first time. So like experiencing something for the first time, there's there's a lot of wonder in that for me. Like I like learning things new. So I'm trying to just enjoy the process of learning something new rather than um, getting frustrated with myself because it's not turning out the way that I want it to. Yeah. I haven't I quite gotten to, that down, but. I need know. to embrace the learning yeah. part more. Um, like I'm trying to learn this new skill as opposed to like, why didn't mine look like hers when I did it? And well, just remember your black printing book and how in there it's like, is this well? You know, if your work doesn't look like mine, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've laughed about that for a while, but it's like, it's true and it comes up. And I think she even says it one time, you know, she's like, it's all right. It's not going to look, you know, quite like this or something. Because you're just yeah. out and learning. And it, so uh, moving forward, it looks like the next half is a little bit more watercolor 
based and not yeah. focusing on lettering. So that's kind of interesting too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's and I think we combined of- some of like the techniques she's shown us. So yeah, I mean, I'm the most like excited to use this masking fluid. Oh. I'm so excited about it. Well, I bought that because I've wanted to play with this for a while. And okay. I'm so excited. We used to just use rubber cement. Ooh. Because it, yeah. it rolls right off the paper. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I'll have to keep that in mind. I haven't had, God, rubber cement. I haven't used that in so long. I know. Like, can you even I know. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, it's, it, you must be able to. I mean. I know. Be. It was like a childhood staple for me. And now it's like, I would not give that to children. Why not? The fumes in this very yeah, it's really because <laughs> I've wondered about like I there were some programs I wanted to do at the library that like like you can do boutique type pro, you know because it because it rolls off you can do a lot of resist stuff with yeah. it that's really cool but I was like I I don't think I can hand out bottles of rubber cement just you can still buy it the fumes yeah, yeah, still you can makes it a heads up to be like it can because I feel like we've used smelly stuff sometimes in programs I can't think of anything right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, soldering fumes. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Or wood burning when they use, yeah. That's really bad. But anyhow. So yeah, so it'll be interesting. Because I really thought this was going to be more like just learning the letter. Like, I don't know what I thought it was going to be. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. But I thought it was going to be more lettering, using just watercolors. And it's been a whole different experience than that. So it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So don't, don't fret about the letters because we're going to be doing, we're going to be painting fruit instead. So it'll, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> what I saw and looking ahead. <laughs> yeah. And flowers. Yeah. And the, a galaxy painting. Okay. Yep. That was the one that sold me on this of like, I want to learn how to paint galaxies because I love stars. And I was like, yeah. okay, I want to do it just for that. I don't know why that was the one thing where I was like, yes. <laughs> it's like, I'm really excited about that. That's out there. Yep. All right. Well, All with right. that, I think we it's 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 early in the day, so let's uh go take off and practice. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us for our halfway point check-in for watercolor lettering. Um, we'll be back in a couple weeks with a wrap-up video for what our experiences were with the program. Feel free mm-hmm. to like the video, subscribe to AADL TV, check out some of the other videos that um, staff and creators at the library have created for you. In the meantime, until we see you next time, stay safe and don't forget to love each other. Bye, guys. Bye.